Hello, this is Dr. Rachel McLeod, and welcome to Module 2 of the CURVES Training for Responsive Feedback. This week, we'll cover the next two sections within our CURVE Responsive Feedback process, uncovering assumptions and revealing learning opportunities. Within this section, we will discuss the creation of a learning agenda and its importance within a responsive feedback approach. Then, we will define a theory of change and map one with an example program while you follow along for your own program. Then we'll hone in on writing specific learning questions that can address areas of uncertainty that we have identified as we map our theory of change. The creation of a learning agenda is a useful process to guide your responsive feedback approach. The learning agenda is an overall roadmap document that includes a theory of change which will map your assumptions on how you think your program will work, a set of learning questions that arise from the set of knowledge gaps that you still have within your program and how to best operate it, and a plan for the activities to address those learning questions. So within the learning agenda, you start broadly creating your theory of change. Through that process, and as you identify your program assumptions, you also identify knowledge gaps or areas in which you still need to know more about how to operate your program for the best results. Based on those knowledge gaps, you then write more specific learning questions that will guide your responsive feedback activities. And finally, in the next module, we discuss the gathering evidence that addresses the learning questions and those knowledge gaps. much in line with the responsive feedback process, the characteristics of a good learning agenda involve items such as flexibility. So you're adapting to changes in priorities and circumstances. So this means that you wouldn't just set a learning agenda and then never revisit it. It will be revisited throughout the course of the program, much like the theory of change that we will learn about in a second. And as your priorities shift and adapt, you can revisit those, work with your stakeholders, and see if there needs to be items that are updated or if priorities need to shift. Uh, key, which uh, this element has been throughout the, the training so far, is we need to make sure that it's realistic. We want to make sure that any learning agenda that you create can actually be achieved using your program resources, your staff skills and capabilities, and this is another reason that we had our previous module to kind of assess some of these resources see if there is a way that we can improve upon these resources and get those in place so you can help create a realistic learning agenda with the skills that you have. We also want it to be inclusive. This also links back to our previous module. We want to include multiple stakeholder viewpoints uh, for all the way from senior leaders down to frontline workers and even beneficiaries so that the learning agenda is representing the interests of multiple parties. And then we want it to be actionable. So we want it to have a timely uptake and use of knowledge that can occur while your program is still in the field. So much like the goal of being realistic, we want to make sure that the learning questions you choose can be implemented in the field and also analyzed in time to provide uh, meaningful feedback to change your program before its completion. A theory of change is a key component of a learning agenda as it serves as a living learning roadmap that can illustrate and clearly define how and why a desired change is expected to happen. Through this process, it helps to articulate your assumptions of how you think your activities are going to lead to your outcomes, and it can really importantly help to fill in the missing middle that we often see in programs to say how exactly will these activities lead to your outcomes and to your goals. Here we have a basic description of the key ways in which a theory of change can help provide information to your program. You may have a set of program activities that you are implementing in the field. You also may have a set of goals or maybe final outcomes that you're hoping to achieve through your program. But key areas in which the theory of change can help your program is really articulating the ways in which you're perceiving that your activities will lead to these ultimate goals. What are those steps that the activities will get through and those intermediate outcomes and outputs that will really lead you on your path to your final goals? So within this second 
question mark. It's really understanding are your activities going to lead to your anticipated outcomes. But also, and importantly, is it helps to clarify the environment in which the program is being implemented. This is often a key step to work with stakeholders to understand more about the environment, the barriers, the facilitators of program achievements, and how they might influence both your activities and on down the chain to your goals. Uh, we'll see an example in just a moment of how a program really worked with their assumptions of how the program would operate in an environment and adjusted their assumptions based on what they found to really situate their program for its best success in the environment in which they were implementing it. Here we can see the building blocks of a theory of change. As you can see, everything is situated within a goal, a clear, realistic, but ambitious mission for the program. Underneath, we see the different considerations that we will map out step by step to determine how the activities that you plan for your programs will lead to outcomes and ultimately to fulfill the goal of your program. We will walk through these step by step but briefly, you see that the program is situated within an environment. This can be the larger state environment or country environment, the community in which the program operates, and the challenges and barriers that might be present within that community or within your target population that you're hoping to address. Then you have a set of activities that are implemented in the field. These activities are often informed by characteristics of the environment or the needs of the population that you're serving and will ultimately lead to program outcomes, which are the results that we're trying to achieve. In the middle are these intermediate outcomes or outputs that can help us guide our understanding of how our activities are actually operating and if they will ultimately lead to our outcomes and final goals. So what's important to note within this process is as you start to fill in these blanks, you're really helping to articulate these outcomes and spell out some of these assumptions that you had about your program. It's important to note that this is a living learning roadmap. So as new findings come to light and as you understand more about how your program is operating in the field, you may revisit this theory of change often and adjust it based on new understandings, new findings from your responsive feedback approach and you know, the learning that you have in the field. So this will grow along with your program. So as you're structuring your theory of change, we often use a backwards mapping approach. So instead of starting from the left and filling in each column all the way across, you really want to start at the end. What are the goals of your program? Those overall goals that situate the rest of your program activities. And then what are the outcomes that you're hoping to achieve? And through this process first, you can see, are those outcomes really in line with how you would achieve your ultimate goal? Once you've identified your goals and outcomes, you would then assess your program activities. You could identify the top program activities and chart them on your theory of change. Next, you might turn to the environment in which the program is implemented and think through the considerations that might impact the program and its success within the field. And then finally, after you have all of these components down, you challenge yourself to think through how do you actually think that your program activities will help, to re help you reach these outcomes? What are the exact channels that the program will have to take to reach these outcomes? And how might we measure that within the field? And as you go through this process and answer these questions, it might start to become evident that there are knowledge gaps. There are gaps in your understanding of how your program can actually work within the field to achieve these outcomes. There are key questions that still remain that we need to fill in the gaps and structure some of our responsive feedback activities. For our first section of our worksheet today, we'll have you walk through a theory of change. And as we present material on our slides, you can pause and fill in the material as it corresponds to your program and your program activities. As we walk through our theory of change, 
We'll be using the example of NIGACARE. NIGACARE is a program in Nigeria that works with patent and proprietary medicine vendors, or PPMVs. These PPMVs are a crucial component of the private sector health system. They are defined as anyone without formal training in pharmacy who sells orthodox pharmaceutical products on a retail basis for profit. They often provide pharmaceutical products for poor and rural communities, but are often not well supported in doing so. They offer an opportunity to expand and strengthen primary health care and family planning services for the poor. So the goal of this program is to work with PPMVs both to improve their service delivery and to help meet their business needs. And as we go through this example, we'll see that this was a program that was taken from another program in Kenya and adopted for the Nigerian environment. And we'll see the process through which they created their initial theory of change and the assumptions they Here we see that the overall goal of the NIGACARE program was to improve the health provision for the poor through PPMVs. Their outcomes centered around improving PPMV livelihoods by helping them meet their business and financial needs and also through improving customer health outcomes. So here we can see that there is a link between the outcomes of the program and their overall program goal. Many of the NIGACARE activities that were originally planned were also present in the program in Kenya. Uh, as they added to and cultivated their activities, they created a digital network of PPMVs, including mentoring, education and tools, credit, vouchering, and referrals. So after considering your program goals, outcomes, and activities, you might turn to considering the environment in which your program operates. And this can be on several levels. As you see here, we might consider the broader environment. So this might be the country or state level factors that influence your program. As you will see in our example, regulations at the country level were an important influence in NIGACARE. The local environment might also be important as you consider how this might impact your program activities and outcomes. Features of the in local environment in which you're implementing the program, such as available resources, beliefs of the community, maybe the support that you have from local organizations might impact how your program activities are able to take place. There may be features of the programmatic environment, such as the internal skills and abilities to work and operate the program that could influence the ultimate program activities and outcomes. And finally, within this component of the theory of change, we also need to consider the needs of the target population. What's actually driving the program activities? This might be from formative research or landscape analysis to determine where the areas of need are that you're going to address through your program activities. And as we will see in the example for NIGACARE, sometimes as you think through this environment, it might change some of your assumptions about your program, about what is needed to make the program successful and ultimately achieve those goals. So within our NIGACARE example, we focus on how the country level environment could impact program assumptions and what was needed for program success. As NIGACARE program staff were designing the program, they conducted a landscape analysis and designed workshops, which revealed key differences from how the program worked in Kenya. For example, in Nigeria, there were reports that PPMVs were a major route for substandard and counterfeit medicines, and they were selling medicines not covered under their licenses. There were also imminent regulatory changes that would create three tiers of PPMVs and require them to register within the Pharmacist Council of Nigeria. So already this indicates that there are certain features within the Nigeria environment that must be addressed to help PPMVs succeed. They were going to face regulatory challenges and particularly would be placed into tiers which meant that there might be different needs for different PPMVs that must be addressed and also the issue of ways to reduce counterfeit drugs must be addressed within a program activity. Here we start to see how activities are outlined and charted through to outcomes. So here we have the program activities with the PPMVs. 
and in our output section we see that these activities are designed to lead to improved services direct to consumer communication and increased business capacity and this is thinking through how the activities are leading through on the chain to our outcomes and as we're doing this it's helping to articulate the assumptions of the exact ways that these activities might ultimately lead to our outcomes and goals Based on their landscape analysis and their understanding of the environment in Nigeria, the program realized that they needed to address the need to change their assumptions or update their assumptions to understand how activities within the Nigerian context would lead to outcomes. And so what they realized is that in order to bring about effective change, the program needed to help PPNVs with the regulatory environment and also facilitate the necessary registration process to target each PPMV with content appropriate to their tier. In response, they added another activity, the creating of a digital ordering facility for PPMVs. This would enable the PPMVs to order medicine from an assured provider, also addressing the potential for counterfeit medicines, and creating a secure supply chain. This would also lead to improved products, which directly links back to the, some of the environmental findings as well. So through this process, they took the program from Kenya, had their activities, and charted them to their outcomes. But then, after understanding the environment of Nigeria, they realized they needed to address some additional considerations, add to their activities, to make sure that they were able to meet those outcomes in this context. So while we walked through the theory of change example using NIGACARE and started to outline some of those assumptions, how we think program activities will lead to outcomes, we realize as we dig a little deeper that there could still be some unanswered questions. Knowledge gaps are areas in which we want to know more about our program. Specifically, it's identifying what other information do we need to achieve our program goals. So for example, Although within our theory of change, we highlighted that the NIGACARE activities were supposed to improve service delivery and products in order to achieve outcomes, it doesn't stop there. While we believe that this is the route that they will take to achieve outcomes, there are still some knowledge gaps. Are the resources that have been developed uh, something that are they used by the PPMVs? Uh, do they find the, use, the services useful? And NIGACARE is still gathering this information. They continue to gather user feedback and monitor user interactions to some of these services. Uh, they're doing this qualitatively, so asking questions to PPMVs and also looking at things such as completion rates on courses so that they can really understand if these projects are working in the field. And so this knowledge gap process helps you probe a little bit deeper into how do we really think that these programs might be working and what are the information goals that we might have to make sure that things are operating as anticipated. And there may be several of these areas in which we don't have all the information and as we create our specific learning questions to address these knowledge gaps, we can start to prioritize which knowledge gaps are best addressed through this approach. In the next section of your worksheet, identify potential knowledge gaps that you discovered after completing your theory of change. Learning questions are questions that are related to programs and activities that are really meant to address the knowledge gaps that you have identified within your program. If answered, a learning question should help you make better, more informed decisions about your program. There are many diverse areas uh, that a learning question could address, uh, but here we have some sample topics. It might be that you need to understand how to best reach your target audience or community with uh, health communication information. You might need to understand the environmental challenges like we discussed in our example and understand how to address them or how they might impact your program activities. If you are considering a new strategy, you may wonder if it's going to work 
and how you might be able to pilot that and iterate that into your program. You might not understand how a current strategy works or what is making it successful. And importantly, if a strategy is not working, this process can help you get out why it's not working and how to address it. So as you can see, depending on the knowledge gaps you've identified, you might have many different questions or topic areas that you would like to um, address with a learning question. However, as we go through the next slides, we're going to help you work to prioritize your learning questions and give you some simple ways to evaluate that question and if it might be the best fit for the program at this stage. So once you have your broad list of learning question ideas, it's important to think through what each learning question would entail. And there are different levels of resources and types of evidence and data collection that might be required for different types of questions. While this could fall under many different categories, there's broadly two main buckets that it could fall into. First, are you going to be conducting an experiment? you have uncertainty about a number of different approaches and you're not sure which one works best. An example of this would be in our MTV Sugar case in which we tested different messages to see which one worked best with a, dip, with a certain group. However, responsive feedback does not have to include a formal experimentation process. It could be that you are more interested in conducting ongoing monitoring in which you're gathering feedback from a certain source or sources and are acting upon that feedback as you receive it. This is more in line with the approach of NIGACARE that we mentioned before in which they continually gather user feedback and adjust as they get that feedback. So there could be different learning questions and how they were framed that are associated with an experimentation approach or a monitoring approach. So as you're prioritizing and refining your activities, you could think through what types of approaches you want to pursue and see what kinds of approaches your learning questions suggest, keeping in mind that there will be different resource needs uh, for different approaches. So as you're starting to refine these questions, thinking through these processes and how the activities would need to be structured to answer your questions will help as you refine approach. So as you begin to hone in on your learning questions and find what questions you think will best address the gaps you've identified within your program, it's a good idea to stop and evaluate them to make sure that they really work within your program and your resources before you get the wheels in motion to set a responsive feedback cycle in place. So first, you might ask, is the program and the question useful? Is there a clear applicability of the question to the program? Is your question addressing a knowledge gap that is of importance to your program? Is the question timely? Can you answer it while the program is still in the field? It's obviously a key component to make sure that we aren't overly ambitious with a question that can't be answered during the time allotted, given the time and resources needed to address it. Is the question strategic? Are there ways that your question can be answered using existing resources? Has data already been collected and maybe just not analyzed that could be used within your program to help either answer the question or provide some context or information that could help you answer the question? What resources are available that mean you don't have to start from scratch in this process? Is it feasible? Do you have the resources to answer this question? Do you have the staff time and skills to do so? And is the question inclusive? Has it been developed with or reviewed by stakeholders? Does it represent the needs of the program beneficiaries? Are there ways to involve the program beneficiaries in the brainstorming process of creating and refining these learning questions? The MTV SUGA test case provides a good example of how to drive your learning question process. As you may remember from last week, the MTV SUGA had a social media component and a television component. And as the team was working to determine how to best conduct responsive feedback activities within the program, 
they really kind of focused in on some of the goals we mentioned on the last slide. So as you can see, focusing on social media allows for a much more timely approach because they could focus on questions about Facebook engagement that could be answered quickly very soon after the post was published. It was also feasible. The resources were easily gathered to implement this on social media and it was also strategic because it was able to leverage metrics that are already collected by Facebook for some quick analysis. And as we mentioned last week, this was also useful information because by testing messages and seeing the ones that had the highest engagement, they could directly inform their next strategy on how to refine their messages. So within your worksheet, you've walked through a theory of change. You've identified both the program assumptions and then knowledge gaps that stem from areas that you still need to answer within your program. And now, as you work through this process, we'd ask that you select your top one to two learning questions and match them against the table that you see in your worksheet to help evaluate if this learning question seems like it would be something that's feasible and useful as we move forward within your program. And we'll spend some time in our training session this week workshopping some of these learning questions.